for the speaking part. The reading, listening, and writing part was the 29th January. I had to be there at 8 a.m. and the exam started at 9 a.m. That day was the worst ever. I didn't sleep. I really couldn't get myself to sleep. I tried to. I even tried sleeping with my parents, but I couldn't. I had a headache, a horrible headache. I've never had one of those in my life. I think it was even a mig migraine, but I kind of cope with the pain because I took a pill, but Oh god, it was horrible. I also had cramps because I was on my period. Um, that day couldn't be worse, really. And the funny thing is that the the previous day, I went with my mom to a spa so that I could, you know, like, calm down. And it didn't work out. So try those things before so that you know if that's useful to you. Because if not, you can screw up your test. Luckily, it didn't happen to me. I could, you know, do the test. But I was super... I felt really bad. Like, uh, I was like, oh god, I wish that this finishes now. Even my eyes were like, uh, blur. You know, uh, it was definitely not the best day of my life. But I don't know, god blessed me, really. Then, uh, the exam ended at 12 p.m. And the listening part was easy to me. And they put us all in a room in a hotel and there, there was this big projector with the time and they put the audio as i told you they don't repeat it twice so it was pretty fast everything and pretty measured too they were always looking also that you weren't you know like coping or from others or something like that the reading part was easy for me too uh when i have those kind of tests it's really good for me i mean um i don't really have a problem with reading but you have to be able to concentrate on the test and look for the thing what i do is that i don't read everything because that will waste time for me but i skim and scan so if i saw in the question like when was the king uh crowned or something like that i will go to the text and see uh, where it says king crown and usually the answer will be like after or before the word but I was like super specific and it has to be like 100% true because if not then it is false or it doesn't appear on the text if it doesn't says anything about it there were some questions where I was like super hesitating but you have to be really careful you have to read good you know do you have to read at a slow pace not too slow obviously but in a pace that you know that you will be uh processing and analyzing whatever you're reading that's what worked for me then um i even had like 15 minutes left to go to the bathroom and i went because i was like oh, i'm dying but i was supervised too obviously then here comes the writing part and it was the most scary one to me they gave me the report as i told you it was a map um like before and after and i hadn't practiced that specific type of question well type of report and i was going to die you know i, I was like no uh I, I i give up but thank god i didn't the problem is that i spent a lot of time thinking um like how to write it because the structure i used was the general overview the most important changes um, some other changes and the least important changes. I didn't put a conclusion and it is usually advised to not put a conclusion in the report. So I had that idea, but uh, the changes I looked were really, there were, there were not a lot of things that you could say like, oh, this uh, line graph skyrocketed in 2019. You know what I mean? Like, I think that when you have a line graph, you have a lot to say or other kind of graph that is not a map because a map is super, concrete super precise and you can't like put your opinion in it you know you know you can't put your opinion in the report so i was like how am i going to learn this you because there is a uh, minimum words also you know i couldn't even really count how many words i had so i was like i totally screwed up the report i was so nervous it was the first time but now that i think about it i didn't do it so bad it was just that i was too nervous and time was like breathing on my neck then i had to write the essay mm, as i didn't really have the idea for the report the 
five uh, the first five minutes on the test i was like i'm passing to the essay and then i'm going to love the report for the last part because you can do that you can switch well when you are in the writing part you can start by whatever you want and i really recommend you start by the essay because it's what's most valuable for the writing by the scripter it is valued twice than the report so it's better to focus on the essay which is the important thing and on the essay i got this question that was like nowadays girls and boys are choosing different subjects specifically women or girls are choosing a uh, art subject while men usually uh, choose the technology subjects why do you think is that or why do you think that has happened over a long time and well i kind of knew well how what to say in the report because i love talking about the equity so i kind of had this big idea on my mind but i didn't know how to put it you know in context in a short period of time because i had like 30 minutes left and i had to get that done quickly so i did my introduction I, in my mind um i knew well how to structure my essay so it was easy to me that part and i just put the connectors that i thought were like c1 you know that were a level much higher than when you are in b1 or b2 because i had practiced some essays in the past that's the important thing that you practice that's why in the report i thought that i did really bad because i really hadn't practiced that kind of report but in the essay i was more confident in myself so i assured that i was writing the good ideas the principal ideas and i was just and i wasn't like scrubbing with a lot of ideas in the air now I took two principal ideas in the two paragraphs that follow the introduction but I did the conclusion really short because I was running out of time and if I you know took more time to do it then I will fall out in the report what you need to do is that you need to plan what you're going to say because if not the essay is going to end up really disorganized so i was like in the introduction i'm going to talk really briefly well not briefly but you know just enough and it's like paraphrase the question and add a little bit of information that comes from your mind you know from your knowledge not just from the text because if you just paraphrase then you're not going to earn points so i did that and also with the paragraphs paragraph one main idea and the support arguments then paragraph two the main idea and the support arguments you can put um for example two ideas in a paragraph but you have to know how to justify them good correctly and you know also manage the time well because that takes time and you know, generally as i told you you take for example 40 minutes to the essay and 20 minutes for the report but sometimes you may take a little more time from one or the other in my case i took a lot of time for the essay and for the report for, was like um, super quickly i was like oh whatever so for improving that part of the test you should write a lot and if you still have time to study for the test you should at least um, have a journal and write your day what you have seen um i don't know the read articles all of that is really important for you to improve your skills and be able to earn a good score at the end i got 6.5 in the writing so i think that i had for example seven on the essay and a six on the report or a 7.5 and yeah i say in a 5.5 or less on the report something like that but i'm sure that the essay was much higher than the report but you have to keep a balance but thank god it was the essay that did much better because as i told you the report is not as valuable as is the essay so focus on what's important you know where you feed grows so now talking about the resources that i use as i told you i did a course on udemy from a scale of 1 to 10 i give it a 5 because as i told you all the resources you can find them for free i used one uh youtuber who's alicia from trust fact ielts if i'm not mistaken she's amazing she has really useful information and 
for free so i recommend you searching for the good and effective information in internet you have everything in there because even though um, it helped me the course it was super long and i feel like i could have saved that money and just did it with the courses that are on youtube another youtuber i really like and i have been following him for a lot of years now it's ielts advantage he has really great tips uh, I will say he's the best in IELTS, so follow him, watch his videos. I assure you that you're going to get a good score with his videos. And for totally free, he has a course too, but it's not necessary. He has a lot of videos with tips and how to structure, for example, uh, your texting, writing, what to say in listening, reading amazing just amazing and other youtubers i followed were e2 english they have some useful information too for ielts so i recommend you looking for them but the best is ielts advantage or alicia uh, from fast track english when it comes to podcasts i listen to the ielts podcast literally it's called ielts podcast another that was like ielts oh. IELTS Energy English Podcast. That's another really good podcast for preparing for your IELTS. Another one that I've been following a lot is Real Life English Podcast. That's the best podcast of my life. That's what really has helped me to improve my English. Also, you can use the British Council resources. They have resources for free. They have even webinars. I attended some of the webinars and they give you the keys to have a good score in it. So, coming from the British Council, what else can you ask for? So take advantage of those resources that they give you for free. As I bought my course on the British uh, Council page, they gave me like a mini course. It had a lot of exercises for me to do. I couldn't get like the full course because you had to pay to have it, but they gave me, as I told you, the mini course to prepare for my IELTS and they have interactive games and everything. I think that the, it is the best course. However, the problem is that it's outdated the one i take was like from 2013 so i was like mm, this is kind of outdated but if you can get the updated version it's the best course but as i told you it's definitely not necessary to take a course you can do everything for free if you put your mind to it as i told you i also used uh the cambridge book the digital version i downloaded it from internet free really if i can i'm going to leave you the link below so that you can get it all also. And last but not least, you have to listen to a lot of songs, to watch Netflix shows, to watch YouTubers, um, different accents, podcasts, everything. You have to consume a lot of English so that it can come naturally to you. This exam is not really a big deal. When I was taking it, I was like, oh god, I'm so nervous, you know, uh, and sometimes it's inevitable sometimes you're going to be nervous but if you prepare good and you know you're good everything will be all right you have to prepare for that nervousness too you know you should meditate and simulate the real setting you know so that when you are in the exam well you will still be a little bit afraid but not too much you have to focus on why are you doing this exam you know what is the goal with this exam and i promise you that will move you forward so um at least one month before your exam uh, try to make your country an english speaking country you know if you can speak with your friends in english if you can speak with your family uh even if you just tell them like okay i'm going to talk to you in, in english and then i translate it to spanish while i'm talking for example in my case because i'm colombian but i don't know if you're indian if you're asian try to interact with that language if not you're not going to acquire it and a disclaimer i have never gone to an english speaking country so i learned all this literally here in my house studying and just put in the work and it doesn't always have to be starting like you know with a book and writing uh like a hundred exercises of present tense no i did most of it most of this um through netflix shows told you i watched whole seasons of series in english 
at first with subtitles because I have to understand what they're saying um, like in the word you know that also means that you can get better at writing because you are processing the the grammar the structure form and that makes you improve at a language and now that I'm studying French I really see how difficult it is to acquire new language skills so it is admirable for all of you to be studying you know to learn a new language to be able to talk to a lot of people in the world because it's not easy it's not easy it's a process and especially if you have difficult educational problems in your country for example this is not something everyone can do and obviously english now is the world language but uh the thing is not everybody knows that not everybody has that fluency not everybody is able to speak it the way you speak it so you have to understand that every person's journey is different but if you want it enough if you fight for it enough you're going to get it and you have to believe in yourself in your abilities so yeah i will say that was my ted talk and as i told you try to keep your english alive for the most part of your life it will get you uh, to a lot of places so yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for watching this video it, i really want to do a lot of videos in english and in french because i love languages but maybe I will do another channel for English so that this doesn't get mixed up. But thank you so much for your support, for everything you have done for me. And if you're new, don't hesitate. You can even learn Spanish with me. So subscribe. And if you have any doubts, anything, don't hesitate and text me. These are my social media. This is all for today. Bye.